you genius artist i am so glad you decided to spend part of your evening with us here this is our ninth episode of our collaboration with nasa's turbo team artemis mission to the moon and beyond yay i'm so excited can you believe it we've done nine episodes now if you have missed any of the previous eight remember they're all streaming on my youtube channel okay and I missed the line, and I had have, I have rehearsed this opening so great, but I missed one line. You genius artstronauts. Jack Moore, our cool director and co-creator, he created that. I love that word. You artstronauts. We're going to stretch our imagination. We're going to take our imagination. We're going to stretch it, and we're going to draw some really cool components to the Artemis Moon mission. Today, we're going to draw the Lunar Terrain Vehicle. And helping us do that is our special feature NASA guest. He's the chief engineer of the Space Exploration Vehicles. His name is Lucian Junkin. And what a cool job. He's in charge of all the machines and all the roving equipment that is going to explore the moon and the Mars and beyond. It's going to be really cool. We have a, a wonderful international celebrity guest artist, Joe Woes, with us today. He holds the uh, currently holds the Guinea Book World Record of cartoon mazes. Very impressive. He's also the official, let me see if I get this right, the official visiting artist for 18 years at the Charles M. Schultz Museum. Isn't that cool? Joe, it's, I'm so excited to have you on today and helping us monitor our live interaction. So you guys are watching us on YouTube and you're watching us on Facebook and you can write comments, you can write questions. And uh, um, Nate Johnson, he's going to be our monitor. He's going to help be our liaison. He's going to communicate your questions and comments to us uh, back here so that you can actually ask uh, Lucian Junkin. And you can also ask the amazing indomitable Jack and Patricia Moore, our NASA artist and our NASA, uh, our NASA educators who are uh, directing this whole effort right now. So Jack and Patricia, I'm excited to get drawing. Why don't you go ahead and uh, do you want to roll the video first? Roll the video and then we'll get into the drawing lesson. How's that sound?
If that doesn't give you some great ideas to draw, wow, that was so awesome. Well, I just can't wait to get into our drawing of the Lunar Train vehicle. But first, let's do a warm-up drawing, okay? So go ahead and grab my uh, hand camera here. And this drawing, the, these are just a few of the drawings we, do, we have drawn in the past episode. This is the SLS rocket. I don't know if you've seen that episode or not. It's really a, a great one. It's, I think it was episode two of our... Uh, uh, episode one, I think episode one was the Orion. There's the gateway. That was another wonderful episode. This is the Orion that uh, is going to dock with the orbiting lunar space station. This is where the astronauts will stay and get their uh, get all together for their uh, little sorties down to the surface of the moon. Uh, there's the XMEU. Is that correct? Did I say that right? You uh, did. Your, That's yeah, the correct. XE. The, this, the, we had so much fun. All these different episodes over the past several months. This was the uh, crawler. This uh, the, the this big. Uh, I mean, I'll show you what this one is. There's so many here. The crawler is what this stands on. This giant tower. That was another episode. That's that holds the S, uh, the uh, S, um, L S rocket. And then we did uh, we did the Orion space capsule. This is what the uh, astronauts are going to use to connect to dock to the orbiting space station on, around the moon. There's the Orion crew survival system. And then our last one we did was the wonderful um, your your uh, kit to the moon, your moon kit, right? The NASA moon kit. Yeah. And this, we had our astronaut, we had Alvin. Uh, and what was Alvin? Help me with Alvin Drew. Alvin Drew. Uh, Alvin Drew, because I always just call him Mr. Alvin. And that was a fun episode. Well, today we're going to be drawing the, um, this right here. Now, I don't know if I always print these up ahead of time. You guys can go to uh, the, NASA.gov. Um, there's a, a website, a link that I'm sure Patricia is going to show you, but it's just a wonderful. I always make a little booklet, but we're going to draw the lunar terrain vehicle. And what's cool is once we start drawing this, uh, Lucian Junkin, he's in charge of all these vehicles and he's going to be telling us some neat details, engineering details. You can ask him questions and he has some cool stories about it. But what are we going to do right now? Just do a quick warm up, maybe like a two minute warm up. And I thought it was very appropriate. Back in my book, I, the, the Imagination Station, that's why when I mentioned the International Space Station, I always say International Imagination Station by accident. Well, this book, I wrote this mini, you it was ever that young. Check that out, Jack. Look how young I was. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Now, this is, I know, look Such at Such a baby. This was, <laughs> see, I know. I'm, uh, that was 40, 35 years ago. We're going to draw the quick moon mobile. Isn't that, isn't that appropriate right it there? It is. Uh, now, now, Lucian might have some engineering uh, comments to, to, to say about that. But let's do a little warm-up drawing, just a quick sketch. I just, what I want to do is get you parents to draw. Now, you kids are super confident put two dots you kids have no problem just diving in with your pencil now i want you moms and dads aunts and uncles grandmas and grandpas to know that put it put a dot above your finger look at this and put a dot below your finger this is just a really quick great way to draw a box i want you guys to know you parents that you can draw if you can write your name you can draw a picture if you can write your name you can learn to draw i promise you just don't uh, stress no stress in fact i have a i have my my uh little uh here it is no stress stress is on the bus <laughs> look at that beep 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 okay hey nate lucian let me hear you beep 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 no beep, stress beep. today <laughs> ah, you guys you guys are actually doing it with me i love you i love you i want everybody to just put their stress on the bus and take a risk take a creative risk today and draw with us if your box right here is not perfect middle lines longer don't worry about it you have a license to flop you have your license to explore a license to step out of your comfort zone and as jack moore coined the term i love this you have a license to chase your curiosity okay i'd love that and jack i use that almost every day by the way to give you credit where it's due okay, so this is a deal. box just a just a warm-up of a sketch warm-up of the box now draw the guideline down below here and what we're going to do is draw these wheels lined up real just real sketchy this is just a warm-up to get your pencils going to get your i might just put two wheels since I ran out of room. Hey, no worries. Look at this. I was going to draw three. Look at that. I was yabbering with you guys and it wasn't paying attention. So I put two. No stress. Beep, beep. Stress is on the bus. In fact, in fact, Nate, I want you to tell me, is anybody writing beep, beep, beep in the text? Everybody, I want you to write <laughs> beep, beep, beep in the text. Let me see. Some, let's see who, who writes beep, beep, beep. The first person who writes beep, beep, beep gets a salutation from Lucian 
all the way from Houston. Here, draw the. See, you tell me, Nate, when someone does beep beep beep. Well, look at why we're drawing Elizabeth this. Scurry. Ah, beep beep beep. Who was it? Elizabeth Scurry. Okay, Lucian, say hi to Elizabeth. Hi, oh, Elizabeth. And then, the guys, there's Lucian right here. Lucian Junkin from the. Uh, he's the chief engineer of the. Uh, space exploration vehicles. So you want to wave to everybody? This is your big first. Your, your big <laughs> hey guys, shot. The There's wheels Lucian. of the rubber go round, round, round. I'm just so <laughs> excited to have you here. And then a quick introduction. We want to say hi to Joe Woes, our famous international artist, our uh, Guinea's record holder for the largest cartoon maze. Joe, you want to say hi to everybody? Hi, everybody. Joe, Joe Woes. And uh, he's drawing on his pad, but do you, I want to see Joe. Did you see Joe's face? I don't know if you, everybody saw Joe's face up there, his hand, the handsome devil. We could be brothers here, and we'll see if the, she grabs you. But you know, she'll, she'll get your camera eventually. I got so it. I little, got it. Uh, it's up there. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Oh, I I, you guys are so advanced. I don't know how you can handle all the. I don't either. Uh, Today's going to be fun. <laughs> oh, my gosh. We have to be... Uh, we have to be just all uh, very, very uh, patient with each other here, right? And the good news is we already put our stress on the bus. Yeah. That's right. If they ties in. Oh, my goodness. Of course, I start screaming the microphones three inches from my mouth. <laughs> beep, 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 beep. All right, look at you guys. That's just a quick little a little a moon guy. This is you guys. You're exploring. And uh, here, what do you think, Lucian? Do you like my little moon mobile here? I like it there, Mark. I like the, okay. the four wheels. The four okay. wheels that close together so you don't get high centered somewhere. Uh, the we got to have more. Earth. Earth. These, can, these can roll. Well, you know what we could do? Here, we could do this. Here, check this out. Look at this. We can just make them into spheres, right? We just draw spheres and shade the sphere, right? Would that be more maneuverable cool. if, if there were just spheres? You see, guys, no stress. You have an <laughs> eraser. You can just adapt and modify. It doesn't have to be perfect. See, I just made this a round sphere. Is that, that's much more uh, adjustable, correct? I, I hope, I think I'm right in that. Sure. All right. Well, yeah, sure, yeah. Sure, it looks great, right? <laughs> sure. Oh, yeah. Well, guys, that was just a quick warm up to show you that if you can just draw, if you can write your name, you can draw in 3D. I hope you join us for this whole uh, program. We're gonna draw the lunar terrain vehicle and this is where i turn it over to our co-host patricia and jack moore our wonderful nasa engineer and nasa educator i'm so excited <laughs> thank you guys for nine episodes this is such a blast you're welcome um, yeah, by the way how did i do on the intro you I'm did amazing <laughs> I, considering how close it was with all the tech issues we had leading up so sorry everybody we were a few minutes late but it all worked out and we're here and we're gonna have a great show so um, all right, take it away. I'm right. going to start drawing my, my little moon, all right. my moon you, vehicle. You start working on your moon buggy. All right, well, um, my name is Patricia, and this is my husband, Jack. Hey and guys. We work at Johnson Space Center, and we're really excited um, to be with you guys tonight um, to tell you all about NASA's Artemis program. We've done a series of, of episodes already, and you've seen all the different drawings Mark's done thus far. And today we're going to talk about the Lunar Terrain Vehicle which is our moon bucky and uh, Lucian is our special guest today and he's gonna he works on this vehicle uh, a lot uh, among other uh, rovers that NASA's built over the years and uh, we're gonna kind of walk you through um, what NASA's working on right now what we've done in the past that have got us to this point and have some fun dialogue back and forth yeah you know and it, it's really cool because uh, the video that we played in the very beginning you can see it's a busy year for NASA and one of the things that we are super excited about is the potential launch of Artemis 1 this year, which will be the space launch system that's going to go up. It's going to take the Orion spacecraft with it. It's going to go around the moon. So it's a human rated craft that's going to go to the moon and come back home in this year. And that is so exciting. Uh, we just got past a critical milestone where we tested all the engines at the same time and things are really moving along. So, so we're really excited to start thinking about well, when we get there, what is that habitat going to look like? What do the spacesuits look like? We drew, we've drawn some of this, and now we get to do some of the fun stuff, in my opinion. How do we cruise around on the moon? So we're excited to hear uh, Lucian's take on, on the moon and, and, and how we're going to get around. But I think the, the first question I'd like to throw out there is, 
what is it that's so different about the moon? Like, why can't I just take our Ford Explorer and go drive around up there? You know, what what's, <laughs> what is it about that environment? So, so Lucian, can you kind of paint a picture for us of what we're up against when, when we land on the moon? Absolutely. So the moon is very harsh. There's no oxygen or air on the moon. So internal combustion engines that need the air that comes into the into the combustion chamber on your engine, we don't have any of that air. So if we wanted to use something like that, we would have to bring our own oxygen and air with us. Uh, that's not that's not easy. So we opt for some other things. So our primary way to to power things in space is through electricity. So we use a lot of electricity to power rovers, just like we did in Apollo. The Apollo lunar rover also had um, batteries on it. And then one of the biggest challenges is the thermal atmosphere on the moon or how cold and hot it gets on any given day or month. It gets all the way from minus 273 degrees Fahrenheit to positive 273 degrees. We could all imagine what 250, 270 degrees feels like on the, because we can all kind of stick our hands in an oven at about 250 degrees. But on the other side of minus 275 degrees, there are very few of us that have ever experienced how cold that really is. So keeping a vehicle alive at that type of temperature is a, is a tough challenge. So there's a few ways we do that. We hunker down for the night and try to keep all, turn all our systems off and keep them warm all night. And that's, that's one way of doing it. That's the way that we're gonna do it with the Viper robot that we're gonna fly here in a couple of years to the moon. Or you can, um, you can have a warm blooded robot that if you have enough power, you just continually warm up the robot. So that's how we're looking at doing things for the rover. For the rover that we take for the crew in, in 2024, 2025, we will um, hunker down for the night. And we have another strategy too. We'll follow the sun. The fact that we're going to the South Pole means that it's very sunny in the, at the South Pole of the moon almost all year long. And they're only, you know, like 20 or 40 hours that are really dark. So we can kind of follow the sun, get some, get some solar arrays, charge our batteries and keep our rovers, our rovers warm. Um, what, what Patricia and Jack just showed you was a pressure. Um, the pressurized rover is a rover that we're also developing in conjunction with what we call the unpressurized rover. What Mark's drawing right now is an unpressurized rover. And the reason we call it an unpressurized rover is because we cannot get into it without spacesuits. So the crew members will have spacesuits on and they'll be, they'll be in the vehicle, running the vehicle with spacesuits. Whereas the pressurized rover, you can get into the, spa into the vehicle and not be in your spacesuit. And we have this really, really cool concept on the pressurized rover that we call suit ports. And NASA has just in the last couple of weeks said that all of our vehicles and habitats will have what we call suit ports. And what that is, is that is a door that leads to your spacesuit and the backpack on the spacesuit is called the life support system or PLIS portable life support system and you can climb in the back of the suit and close your pliss and then also close the door to your capsule and then you can walk away so our vehicles um for our so our lunar vehicles the pressurized rovers we're designing is like that that's back cool. to you jack so yeah thanks for that lucian now, i know we've got some video of that we'll take a look at here in a little bit but i i'd like to uh Joe, you had a spacesuit that you had uh, whipped up there pretty quick. Uh, yeah. I would love well, you to know, I, I when everybody was talking about lunar rovers, <laughs> I, I sort of got a rover here. I 
love it. Rover, uh, like roof, roof, Rover. Rover. Oh my gosh, that is that is. It looks a lot like my beagle, actually. So I wonder if there's a well, little. I saw it. Oh, that's great. Thing, so. <laughs> well, that's great. And then um, I, I, saw, I thought I saw a Rover there. Could we check on that? Yeah. Oh, I love that. I love the personality that the uh, LTV has there. So Lucian, does the LTV you're working on have this sort of personality? <laughs> uh, we we like to think it has its own personality. It might not have this exact personality. <laughs> personality all to its own. Um, but the one that we're prototyping right now actually has um, what we call uh, crab steering or omnidirectional steering, where you can point the wheels sideways, and you'll see that a little bit later on the space exploration vehicle that we developed um, several years ago that also has that capability of driving sideways. I think and you saw, yeah, I've you got saw, it. I've got it pulled up. I can show it real quick. Here we go. Sure. So this is the space exploration vehicle. Um, it has the capability of supporting two crew members up to two weeks. And what's different about the primary difference between some a pressurized rover and unpressurized rover and the unpressurized rover like mark and joe have drawn is you only get to go as far as your spacesuit will take you and as a matter of fact our operations say that you must be able to walk back to the capsule to your to your home if the if the vehicle if your rover breaks down so in this vehicle, and you can see right there, the crew members coming off the, the off of the suit ports. And this is out in the desert in, out in Arizona. And it is at an old lava flow. So we do a lot of testing out there. And these are two rovers um, kind of mating together so you can share the space. So when we go out, we'll take two rovers and drive two rovers um, and do the exploration. But back to what I was talking about with the, with the rovers, the, diff the main difference. The main difference is, is that we can explore kilometers and ex kilometers and up to probably 100 kilometers from, from home or base in these pressurized rovers. Whereas in a LTV, you can only explore about five or six kilometers because if you imagine you saw you saw rover there that joe was joe was drawing he's got to be able to walk back to the um to his home if the if joe's rover i understand that rover is driving rover but if <laughs> down, well now i'm, I'm working on that crab steering you're talking about oh <laughs> <laughs> we've got a crab now let's see your rover again uh, joe so we can he can reference it if you don't mind so there if the rover breaks down then the other rover that's riding on the rover has to be able to walk back and also it's easier to walk on the moon when since it's only one sixth of the gravity it still takes a little time to um, walk in a spacesuit so we can only get away from the habitat about say say five or six kilometers okay nice road yeah so it's, a, it's almost about three miles or so a little over three miles so that's the distance that they would have to be able to walk back right so there's like a perimeter that we wouldn't go past just in case correct we call that the walk back distance and so just like you have you have safety operations when you do things around the house um, whether it be bicycles and putting your wearing your helmet or whatever we have safety precautions when we're on, when we're on the moon and that will be one of the major safety precautions is if the rover breaks down you got to be able to walk on that's great and, and so mark i'm curious uh, so the three miles that's about what you're walking once a day now right i know you've got your your challenge your your what is yeah it, 21, 21, i wish yeah, 21 minutes a day of exercise to, to beat the COVID blues away. It was my, and Mario and I both are doing it. Mario's right here. I got to just say, can you see here? Can Mario say hi? There is Mario. You want to pull Mike? Oh, you can see him. Mario's, or oh, Mario here. Say hi to everybody. Hi, Mario. Uh, he's hi, Mario. Hi. Hey, there Mario. Jack says hi, Mario. Mario <laughs> got a vacuum, uh, Houston Mission Control, when we went down there. I just, that was the highlight of our decade. 
and he got always oh, no he got a sweep with the the broom. Jack, that was such a great thing that you did. My son just loves vacuuming and sweeping. No problem. Or Mario's Mario's correcting me. He's, he's like making the gestures. It was a broom. It was a broom. <laughs> <laughs> So, so Mario, you know, Lucian was talking about safety procedures and, you know, I never thought about it when you're drawing, are there certain things, and I'm, and I'm asking you as the master artist, the educator for a lot of the folks on this call, are there things we should think about like, you know, safety wise when, when we're drawing or we're creating art? I'm, you know, I've never thought about that. Are there, are there things like, I guess if your pencils are too sharp, don't put them in your pocket or something like that, right? <laughs> <laughs> any, well, any... the only safety thing I'd come up with is uh, don't, kids, don't put your hands in the oven. Yes. Yeah. Don't try this at all. I think that was like he said. Oh yeah, we can put our hands in the two hundred. No, 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 you can't. But technically, that's he's trying to make a point, you guys. But don't do that. I think you know, that's 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 the elementary teacher in me. But as far as the the safety goes, I just it's all positive, joyful. Just get your pencil and draw. I, every so many people are so nervous about it that they can't do it, and it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, I'm, you know, mine's all looks like it's duct taped together, but I'm having a blast drawing it. So the only safety concern, safety issue is to draw every day so you're in a good mood and you beat those COVID blues away. How's that for turning it I around? like that. I That's like good. it. good. So, hey, I tell you what, uh, let's let's uh, go check in on Nate. And I'm wondering, Nate, are you seeing uh, any questions coming in through Facebook? Maybe we'll give you a second to kind of peruse it just to see if we've got anything and, and come back here in a couple of minutes. And so, Joe, well, we're trying we're trying something different here. We usually do it on Saturdays at noon, but I wanted to give my uh, my social media creative tribe and all my Zoom students on my Fine Arts Academy a chance. So we're trying it on Monday evenings for these, uh, and I'm I'm curious to see. It's a little more stressful for you and Jack, huh, with all your kids and your dogs. <laughs> no, it's just it's just a busy week this week. Um, we've got another big event tomorrow and lots of stuff going on. So it's not it was it's not that it's stressful in the evening. It's just this week just ended up being nuts. <laughs> well, I got I got to I got to plug the story times from space. You guys you guys are directing or are very involved with the production of the live story times from space. The the astronauts are reading a story. Uh, from a book, right, Jack? Can you just meant tell it? Tell us about that. Yeah, yeah that's right. Day. Yeah, tomorrow at eleven thirty a.m. Central Standard Time, the we'll have an astronaut reading. Uh, uh, excuse me, eleven a.m. Central Standard Time. We're going to have an astronaut reading a book live from the International Space Station. And if you want to learn uh, learn more about that, go to www.storytimefromspace.com/live, and uh, we'll we'll drop that in the chat so you guys can check it out. But should be super exciting. Okay, I gotta go back to Joe. Joe, you draw so fast. I, I, I think we've missed like two <laughs> two drawings here. Tell us what you got going on. Well, we're 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 back to Rover here. <laughs> uh, he's he's got to be able to walk that three miles back, so he's getting a head start. <laughs> <laughs> There's a Rover, and then of course uh, our crab steering. Very a crab steering. That's hilarious. <laughs> which, which we mentioned there. That's, then, that's me when I'm driving without my coffee. <laughs> and there's our uh, our regular uh, rover there. And then, uh, of course, there's. Uh, I love that. Rover. That's hilarious. That's, that's so awesome. good. Love it. All right, Nate. How's it looking? Any any questions coming in yet? Oh, you may have your mute. Uh, mute. Yep, we have a couple. All right, All let's right. hear it. All right, Brandon says, how many draft designs have you made before you settled on the final? Oh, like for the Lunar Rover, huh? Lucian, that might be a good question to you. Oh. To you. So we do a lot of prototyping. So the way we do it is we prototype, prototype, and then we decide on the final design. So I would say, actually we started, um, we started Apollo, so we learned a lot from the Apollo rovers, but we built the first space exploration vehicle prototype in 2005. We have built some different vehicles that are helping us advance the technology. So that's about three designs. And now we're meeting literally every day and designing another LTV prototype before we get to the, oh, there you see, there you see. SEV in the upper right, you have MRV, which 
is a vehicle that also has that advanced mobility that's more look more looks like a urban vehicle um, then over on the right you have resource prospector so we built that vehicle so we have we will have built about six or seven prototypes before we get to commission the flight the flight vehicle so wow. it's a lot of work it is it's a lot of fun and the prototypes the prototypes are good for design and to test out the unit itself but it's also great to um to use for practice like we take them to the desert and we test them in the desert and we drive them we take actually this one right here that's that's mike um mike is an of uh, the the person on the right is a astronaut that he's had four or five um, space shuttle missions a bunch of spacewalks he and i actually had the um, pleasure and honor to drive the sev in president obama's first inauguration so that's how old that vehicle is president obama's first inauguration was january of 2007 so that vehicle was rolling down pennsylvania avenue um on january 20th of 2007 which was a lot of fun yeah that is so cool, cool. so i so awesome. i have a question lucian and then maybe we can get another one from the audience um how do they pack the rover and get it to the moon and do the astronauts have to assemble it or is it already assembled so on the apollo rover we took it with the astronauts and when the astronauts landed the first the first mission that had one was 15 16 and apollo 17 all had rovers so they would go down they would get in their spacesuits they would get out they would unpack the rover and kind of unfold it. Whereas this time, the crew is going separate from the rover. So the rover will go down on what we call a clips lander or a commercial lander, where it's basically a cargo carrier to get cargo to the moon. So the rovers will go down on a separate lander. It'll launch separately on a separate day, uh, maybe months ahead of, of the time the crew goes down and it will be waiting for them when it gets to the moon hmm. one of the differences between apollo and and artemis is that when we put a rover on the moon we will be able to teleoperate it from earth and do some autonomous operations the crew will only be there for a couple of days out of the year and then we have the other 300 or so days to um to be able to operate it from Earth, kind of like we do the rovers on Mars. Okay. Um, so we'll do a lot of science and, and things when they're not there. That's such a cool idea. I love the idea of that. You know, it's something that the humans are going to use, but it also has a life. You know, where we're not there, that you know, it could be doing important science or helping set things up. So that that's so cool. So Nate, let, let's uh, see if we have. A, and I think you had a couple of questions. So do we have another one from our audience out there? And in. in uh, social media land uh yep uh fatima on youtube wants to know how much lucian draws <laughs> <laughs> oh fatima. i do i taught a i taught about all of our students i'm the head coach of the robonauts which is a high school robotics team that is about 60 has we have about 60 students and about 20 mentors but just this last saturday we had a call where one of the big things when you're developing a robot, especially with a big team like we have, is to get all of the students and mentors to sketch what they think the robot is. And then when you start to see that, um, people get ideas and it really gets the creative juices flowing. So just this Saturday, I was teaching a kind of the students of how to sketch and use what we call PowerPoint CAD. So we can animate in PowerPoint. Um, it's really powerful to do that. And I know Mark Mark probably doesn't want to hear this, but I sh teach them kind of how, um, how to use, we used to call it onion paper when we were in school, but <laughs> I was students how to use the 3D features in PowerPoint 
and then lay a piece of paper over. Oh yeah, the, trace it. That's awesome. Of course. And trace the and trace it. So I'm if a big the, big proponent for tracing. Draw it, trace it, fix it. Trace. Card comic artists, illustrators, they do it They're all over the world. That's how they create. Uh, they oh, do they? And then they, they you sketch it and then you lay it over. I use a light board to trace. In fact, it's right here. I'll show you real quick on my. Uh, it's not plugged in. Maybe it is. No. Nope. But see, I have this always handy. So I would do a drawing of scribble and put it on here and then light it up and then put another to, in order to get the inking details. Um, so, yeah, tracing is an incredible, important, uh, very, very helpful tool. Yeah. So we t we teach them how to draw um, and sketch with those. So it is it is critical. And the when you get in front of a group of people of engineers and you're at the whiteboard and you're trying to convey an idea, I would say 99% of the time we're sketching and not writing words on the, on the screen, you know, a thousand, um, a picture's worth a thousand words. I kind of think in our world, a picture's worth about, uh, 1.18 million words. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like it. I love it. A picture's worth it's a so, billion so words. Powerful. That's awesome. So do we, uh, did we have another question, Nate, or or we, or do well, we can, move can on? I, can, I, can, I, can I ask something from of Nate? Of course. You sure. got to see this. I met Nate uh, uh, about a month ago. He's such a, I, I sent out an appeal, help, help, I need a volunteer from my creative team, my creative tribe to help me do some web development. And I had uh, an amazing uh, uh, response from all these uh, geniuses around the world. And Nate uh, is just, he's been sticking with me all the way from that, uh, helping me create the websites and helping me do all my social media. So thank you, Nate. But in the course of getting to know Nate and his uh, two-year-old son and his wife, uh, I get to see this room behind him. Nate, can you do a quick 20 <laughs> second? You got to see this Star Wars room. <laughs> you going to give us Look a tour? Yeah, he's going to give we us a, a one-minute tour. Uh, I, celebrating space, I tell you, I love Star Wars. Huge Star Wars fan. Oh, okay. yeah. Star, Star right, Trek and then Star Wars. So, right oh, next yeah. to the Mandalorian helmet. Very you, did cool. you Did you do paint that or something? Uh, no, yeah, wait. that is a you, you have, uh, the, print. You have, uh, now, look at the behind him, you guys, real quick. <laughs> Behind him, he made that Han Solo. Oh that. my gosh, that's so awesome! That's a, that's a giant. If you go up to the, keep moving the camera around. We can go. We can go see, see Han Solo. You see? Yeah. Now he's got to get up. Look at look at his collection. I love this. That we're supposed to be working, and sometimes I say, "Come on, I got to see some of your stuff." I'm very jealous. <laughs> so look at this. Jealous of your collection. Oh, oh we lost your camera. Oh, there, oh, there he is. He's back. back. He's back. Right. He's back. Well, there we go. You slipped to the dark side. Uh, yep. Besides Here's the fact awesome. you have a really cool Viking haircut, dude. That's awesome. <laughs> yep, so it is life size. And I actually made it out of a door. Oh my gosh. That's awesome. <laughs> that should be the door to the room. Are you going to put it on hinges and, and that's how you get into your uh, office there? I should do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thank you. Thanks so much, Nate. You can, you also can actually. Hands. <laughs> get that All right. Thank you, Nate. All right. So, what's, what's the next question, Nate? Okay, the next question is also from Brandon. He wants to know, is the rover manual or is it RC? I think it's both. Good, right? Good question, Brandon. It is, it is both. So when the crew members are on the rover and driving it around, they will be able to drive it just like you, uh, someone drives a car on Earth. But then when the crew leaves, it will be remote control and it will have an antenna. I think Joe was drawing a really cool antenna that looks like the direct to earth antenna that we'll have on the rover. Direct to earth means that the antenna can actually pick up a, a, another antenna on earth and we can talk directly to the rover. And the lapse, time lapse is about, eh, about nine seconds so we won't be using joysticks to necessarily control it, but we will be telling it, hey, rover, go over there. And then the rover will be smart enough to drive over there. And, and then if it encounters something, it will intelligently either say, oh, I see a big ditch, I'm gonna stop 
or um, oh, I see a rock. I'll just go around this rock. <laughs> and all types of things to be able to to autonomously drive. Well, here I want to go see Joe's uh, direct to Earth antenna here. This uh, this guy. Ah, I love it. <laughs> Joe. Hey, Joe's got a great video of his. We, uh, that's perfect. We were about to segue into that. Go for it, Mark. You can do it. <laughs> oh, all right, Joe. Joe, it's just. <laughs> I, I just met him again at, uh, what, six months ago, and I feel like we've been friends forever. Kindred spirits for sure. I'm so proud of you, Joe. He's got, he just did his first episode, his pilot, and six episodes of his new public television series. And Joe, I'm going to let you tell, tell us about your PBS series and your time with the Charles M. Schultz Museum and uh, all your cool stuff. Yeah, I, I just um, wrapped finishing uh, filming Cartoon Academy with Joe Woes, which will uh, run on WQED uh, here in Pittsburgh and throughout the state and then hopefully nationwide. Um, and we actually filmed in the same building as Mr. Rogers Neighborhood. Oh, wow. Oh, cool. That's so awesome. <laughs> so you're shooting in, in Mr. Rogers' old hood then. <laughs> that, I, we literally are in Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. That's so cool. Well, we have a, a little video that we put together of some of your, your work. And uh, we'll, we'll take a look at that real quick. Oh, cool. There's. Feel free to talk oh. over it and tell us what we're looking at. So I have a, a syndicated feature that appears in newspapers all over the world called Maze Tunes. Um, last year, I actually won the Rubin Award for that, which is the highest award a cartoonist can receive. Uh, I've got about, oh, a half dozen Maze books. This is my brand new one coming out in a couple months, Mega Maze Challenge. Uh, oh, this is great because I, I am just did designed a house float for uh, in New Orleans for Mardi Gras. Oh, and that's cool. Cool. There. And you can see my mazes, of course, at mazetunes.com. And you can see my cartooning lessons at howtotune.com. And uh, would you, you know what? Would you guys like a special sneak peek of my next book? Yes. Yes, we yes. would. Yes, no, yes, no one yes. Has seen <laughs> no one has seen this yet, and I have a special sneak peek. My next book is called Amazing Peanuts, <gasps> and we'll keep your distance. Wow. Oh, top secret. I'm so glad Whoa. you're showing that. That's so cool. Snoopy's on the moon. So, uh, that is amazing. 100 mazes featuring the Peanuts characters. Uh, of course, I'm the resident cartoonist or uh, visiting cartoonist at the Charles M. Schultz Museum. I visit uh, twice a year, every year for the past 19 years now. And um, so I've always loved Peanuts. I grew up with them. And to be able and work with those characters and turn them into my mazes is just, um, it's a lifetime dream. So, and and Snoopy has a wonderful connection to NASA. It does. So it's, it's yes. a, yeah. a, a long relationship there. Yeah, on Apollo 12, the uh, and I may get this backwards. I think the command module was Charlie Brown and the lander was Snoopy. Or I it's, that right? I don't know. Or it could be the uh, other way around. I'm but. looking at my fact checker. <laughs> I don't know. Right. <laughs> and, and I, I believe what what it would be um, one of the high one of the greatest honors that you can get is at NASA for your service. Yes. Is, is it silver, silver Snoopy? Snoopy? It is. That's it is. right. Lucian, yeah. do you know anything well, I about think that? You guys deserve it for the work you're doing yeah. on these shows. So. Good luck. Cool. <laughs> yeah, the Silver Snoopy is an amazing award. It is um it's given by the our astronauts to help for people who help um get them into space and get them back safely. So it is a it is a, a huge honor at NASA. Yeah, it is. And we all love Snoopy. Yes. Yep. Yeah, we do. <laughs> and and I think Joe really loves mazes. I have this picture here of now this is the world's largest hand drawn maze. Did I get that right? That is right. That was the world's largest hand drawn maze. Uh, I created that. Oh my goodness! I guess it's about eight years ago now. And uh, it was four feet high by thirty six feet long. Oh my gosh! Over two hundred illustrations. Wow. So there's quite a bit more maze that we're not seeing in that picture. That's amazing. <laughs> Joe, amazing. Joe, yeah, I know. I was gonna say, Joe, you're amazing, but Jack, you beat me to it. Sorry. No, oh, that's hilarious. So, 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 Lucian, I, I want to go back to you. Um, we we jumped right in because this is a really exciting topic. But I'm curious, how did you get into robotics? And, and, and how did you get into robotics mentoring? Because I really want to learn more about the, the first robotics project that you're 
involved in. And I think we have a really cool video of one of the robots you built last year too. Yeah, show the video and, and they'll, they'll find an interest in that, we hope. Um, so I was always interested in being an engineer, um, but I also wanted to serve people. So when I went off to college, I had some amazing mentors. Um, my mother, my father, uh, Coach Beasley, Coach Garcia, a lot of great mentors. And so after college, I was thinking about going back and teaching and coaching um, like Coach Beasley. And it was kind of funny because he wanted to be an engineer, but he went into coaching. So they encouraged me, my parents, Coach Beasley, Coach Garcia, they all encouraged me to say, hey, go find mentoring opportunities um, and be an engineer. So, and if it doesn't work out, then become a coach. So then within a few years of graduating from college, I was doing all types of mentoring things. And I come to NASA to be part of the beginning of uh, robotics, the robotics branch program. And then um, I, was introduced to first robotics and first robotics is this is a first robot playing uh, a game in 2019 that was actually a space-based thing where you took these balls and you put them in these towers and you took these ports and you covered up the ports it was a um it was a really cool game so this is what i was talking about earlier where 60 students get together and build this robot to do this challenge so I've been mentoring the Robonauts for, oh, 20, I'm going wow. on my 20th year. That's amazing. Um, Robonauts. Wow. So it's been a great experience. And the most fulfilling part of it all is seeing the students just grow and be great individuals and go out and do wonderful and great things out in the world. After 25 years, you get a lot of satisfaction of them coming back and telling you the great things that they've done. I, I bet, you know, and that, that's got to be an amazing feeling, especially when you get to work with those students later on, because I think you have a few folks on your team now that, that came through FIRST Robotics, right? Correct. So when we get together every day, I was telling everybody that, at, that we're designing the rover um, at 1130 every day, we get together for several hours. And there are about eight people um, in that design and we bring up CAD and CAD is a way to draw um, in 3D in very fine detail. But in that meeting, when we're doing CAD and everything, there are probably all of them are either mentors on a first team, have been on a first team or have graduated from a first team. Wow. So, um, so Rover is literally being built um, by students that have been on robotics teams. It's That's pretty incredible. amazing. That's really That's incredible. so inspiring. That is so inspiring from for anybody, all the uh, the kids that will be watching this around the world. Uh, robotics, uh, if you guys like science, I don't know anybody, any child out there or any adult for that matter who doesn't like robots and ro robotic uh, ve vehicles. Um, I what, think Joe's what, got his where, own where, where take would on, they go? on uh, so, robotic sports here. I'm sorry. <laughs> that, yeah, I think <laughs> robotics is a slam dunk. That's right. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I'm loving the that's puns awesome. tonight. <laughs> hey, what, uh, Joe, you're so. By the way, Joe, you you're really good drawer. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you. By you're a good drawer. Right. Uh, by the way, you're a really good drawer. Uh, hey, Lucian, for kids that aren't living near Houston. What can you do to uh, direct them, coach them, inspire them to pursue their their interest in robotics? What, could they join? We're them? living in a we're living in a super fortunate time right now. There are all kinds of opportunities throughout um, throughout the country and actually throughout the world to get involved in robotics. And what we really focus on is we really focus on engaging students in robotics when they're really young. So when they're in the second, third, fourth, fifth, what that does is that gives everybody an opportunity to see robotics before they start making decisions of what they would like to do in life. And there are lots of great products out there. 
whether it be some Lego products, um, there's some bot ball products, there's VEX products. Um, for example, VEX has the VEX Go system that has three motors. You can drive it from a tablet. You can build a whole robot out of a VEX kit just like we used to, I don't want to put any any ages to anybody, but we used to have a record or really cool. But these are these are 1.18 million times better than a rector sets. So there are a lot of cool things out there that that parents can get for their students and their scholars to help them get involved in robotics. And you can always go to robotics.nasa.gov and all of the programs are there um, for you to explore and to see what you might be interested in. That's awesome. So you guys, if you ever have any questions about that, you go to Draw Artemis, uh, pound, hashtag Draw Artemis. The, the, they'll, they'll have the information there too. Is that correct? Yeah. And uh, Patricia, I'll put Jack, it in the I'll chat. Put, yeah, I'll put it yeah, in the chat it, um, after oh, we're good. finished. Um, I can't do it right now because I'm not that good. <laughs> no, you're doing fantastic. I, I cannot believe how guys you're. Yeah, I need like an extra there. couple of hands and arms, yeah, you know, like the octopus <laughs> mom or something. Yeah, right. yeah. But I will add it to the Facebook chat and the YouTube chat after we're finished for sure. I just I loved how you inspired for eight for over what you said over 20 years you've been inspiring these junior high and high school students and they go on to college and then working at NASA to actually designing the vehicles and the robots so just very very impressive and wonderful you're doing great work Lucian so Joe you had mentioned that you also have some really cool things that are out there that we might be able to find is there a place that we could go find uh, some of your books and some of your work Yep, my, my books are available at um, any bookstore um, on Amazon and so forth, but you could ask your local bookstore, just ask for, uh, you know, Maze Books by Joe Wos. Um, you could visit me on YouTube at howtotune, H-O-W-T-O-T-O-O-N.com. Uh, and um, I teach cartooning. Uh, I learned from the best. Mark Kistler. <laughs> That's right. So you I learned were, from the best. They, and, now it, it, it looks... Uh, it looks like we could be brothers, but I'm uh, uh, I'm I'm seven years older than you, right? So seven I'm years 57, older. <laughs> I'm fifty-seven, yeah. and I started when I was doing the Secret City. I was nineteen, and you were about eleven, right? Yeah, that's about right. Uh, eleven years old, and that there back, the, you know, when when you're nineteen and, and eleven, there's a huge difference. But now you you're more, so much more mature than I am. <laughs> <laughs> I think we put spots. I look older, you look younger. <laughs> oh, yeah. That, that, thank you. Love you. You're awesome. Hey, I thought we all agreed we weren't going to talk about ages on this call. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we should have that picture of Jack when he's eight years old. Oh, and, uh, I did a picture with me with my Commander Mark uniform in Texas. Oh, I've conveniently misplaced it somewhere. I'm not sure where I did oh. it. <laughs> so, I hey. Wait, I have it handy. <laughs> so, I tell you what, I would love to take a few last looks at everybody's work. And so, I think I see. I, I think Joe has Joe. finished another 12 drawings. Here, Joe, we, we'll uh... let, well, I'm going to spotlight you and uh, let you scroll through the different drawings that you've done. So we've, we've, we've got an alien uh, with a, a driving a little rover there. Uh, we've got our uh, robot playing. Uh, oh, that's so oops. awesome. Uh, we've got our robot with the antenna. Love this guy. Oh, no. He's it. got the director earth antenna. I, I, and uh, this is a prototype one of uh, the, one of the rovers there. That one didn't pan out. Too. <laughs> how, how in the world did you get all these drawn plus colored? Oh, my goodness gracious. Our, our rover. Uh, and then, of course, the crab steering. <laughs> That's great. That's our first rover. And then uh, the one we started off way back here. Rover, rover. Rover, 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 rover. rover. That's awesome. Well, Mark, let's let's cut over to your work here. And I see you've worked in STEAM. So this is a great oh, yeah. time to talk about STEAM, Mark. Oh, I got my two minutes. I do. Well, <laughs> it's, just, it's, such, it's such an important and noble goal, pursuit for all over the world for the STEM. Uh, Lucian uh, knows STEM, and it works with uh, all these uh, educators of their core curriculum, the STEM goal of science, technology, engineering, and math. It's a very powerful goal for to get the kids to be really fluent and very uh, adapt at science, technology, engineering, and math. Now, what's my contention, and that along with 
tens of thousands of art educators that you're missing the most important element, which is art. Art helps us add the element of creativity so that you learn science, technology, internet, and math, and you learn how to apply it to real, real world problems using your creative thinking and imagination. As Einstein is famously quoted, imagination is more important than knowledge. Um, using your imagination to apply the technology and the math and the engineering skills is how they come up with these awesome dune buggies for the moon and those awesome habitats that are going to be, you know, they're like giant RVs driving around that you can actually, you know, walk out, right? The part of the built part of the vehicle is actually a spacesuit that walks out. So I hope that everybody can join me with this idea that get our kids uh, lined up with the science, technology, engineering, art, and math, the STEAM goal for curriculum. There, how's that? Did I did I encapsulate that? Clear it enough? was perfect. It was perfect. Yeah. yeah, I think that's you know, and I loved how that came up during the discussion today with Lucian talking about how you guys start with basically a cocktail napkin sketch before you really kind of get into the designing. And I love the idea of getting into uh, uh, PowerPoint, laying out shapes, and then sketching that. So, you know, you don't have to be you don't have to learn how to draw by hand, you know, to be an expert, you can start so basic, you know, and I think that's one of the things that, you know, when we talk about safety and drawing, I think the biggest risk you can take is just not trying, right? So, you know, no matter what your level is, a, art can be incredibly helpful. And I know at NASA, it's a great way for us to communicate, you know, like uh, Lucian, he, he uses art to create very complex machines and ideas. And then we have to use art to take his complex machines and ideas and, and, and break them down so we can <laughs> communicate them. So, so art works both ways. Okay. And, um, you know, it's, it's great to have everybody participating on the call and, and sharing your experience and knowledge and your art. And, and uh, you know, I, I love these programs because it, it really kind of drives home the point, you know, that just having a good, well-rounded education in many different areas is so, so um, beneficial in life. Now, quick before you before you say the final conclusion, Jack, what is the the link at NASA for folks or artists who want to pursue uh, career possibilities with NASA? So, if you go to NASA.gov, that is the best place to start <clears throat> because I think we all have different ideas on the types of art that we want to explore. Right? You might want to be a graphic designer. You might be uh, a video editor. You might want to work with three D modeling to create programs to train astronauts. So, I would say. Go to nasa.gov and in the search bar, type in what you're interested in. And I think what comes up will really surprise you. Um, we, we have a, a, a team member on staff, a very talented artist named Logan Goodson, who actually does acrylic paintings. And he's done works for some of the programs as a NASA artist. Yeah, so, so we really run the gamut when it comes to different types of talents and experiences. So I'd say start there. Go check that out. And if you don't find what you're looking for there, you know, come on back to the next draw, Artemis. Post that question in social media, and we'll, you know, we can help run those uh, yeah. uh, down for you. And by the way, if you've been drawing at home, Mark mentioned use that hash hashtag draw Artemis. He's got it right here on his drawing. We'll throw that up oh, one more time. I'm also trying to find it too. Oh, there we go. There we go. We want to <laughs> see your art. So what, whatever you created while you were drawing along today, do hashtag Artemis. Put it out there on social media. We would love to check it out. You know, hopefully in future episodes, we'll pull some of these and share share your works uh, during the program. I think that'd be kind of an interesting uh, segment. So, yeah. And something to add to that, if you there's lots of different ways to get jobs at NASA, you can come in as an intern um, through our co-op program or as an intern as a college student. There are great opportunities to get experience that way. Um, there's the government end of NASA where you come in as a civil servant through USA Jobs. There are tons of contractors and a lot of the artists that work at NASA work for different companies that are on contracts with NASA. So there's so many different ways. It's hard to answer that question in like one minute. We could talk all day about that. <laughs> I love it. Well, thank you everybody for participating with this episode nine of Draw Artemis Live. Thank you for team, Turbo Team, NASA Artemis for your dreams and making this, this whole exciting possible mission to the moon in 2024. I'm in awe and I'm inspired. I'm so excited. Thank you, Lucian Junkin, for being our special feature NASA guest. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. You, you are Thank so Thank you for having me, Mark. And parents, remember, engage your students in STEAM when they're no, You got it. You got it. You <laughs> right added art. Woo! I got Lucian Junkin to say STEAM. All right. And also get your kids uh, into the sciences. And Lucian, I'm going to come down. I'm 
only an hour from you guys down there after COVID. I'm coming down with my son and we want to watch some of your competitions. I, I just have always wanted to watch one of those robotic competitions. Uh, Joe, thank you for your involvement and for your participation with our event tonight. Thank you, Joe. Thanks so much for having me anytime. Wasn't it fun? I told you it'd be fun. I had a blast. I'm so glad you're here. So we'll have you come back again. It'd be awesome. And uh, Nate Johnson, thank you for being our uh, our uh, social media liaison. You did an awesome job. And yeah. I, my favorite part, of course, was seeing the the uh, Mandalorian helmet. That was really cool. <laughs> awesome. So thank you, Jack, you Jack and Patricia. Thank you. There's our big Brady bunch. Yeah, we're having and, tech uh, issues yeah, today. Joe, Joe's right behind us. Sorry. I know. Joe, I'm so up. sorry. There's like I'm trying to fix stuff and get it out of the way. Oh, it's it's wonderful. I'm well, trying to move it around. Up. There, there we go. go. Wait, I think I got it now. I'm gonna. There we go. Now we There's have everybody. There. <laughs> Bye. Oh, thanks thank for you, joining everybody. us. You guys have a great thank day. You. We're gonna um, show one more video to talk about the team Artemis and all the great people working at NASA to make it happen. And we hope you join us next time. Bye bye. Bye guys. Bye. Ready. At NASA, we have always answered the innate call to go. With Artemis, we are going to stay. Proving that humanity can live on the moon, Mars, and other worlds. And share the wonders of the solar system with all. Our story is one of people. All those who make this journey possible. From advocates across communities. To companies across industries. To countries around the world. We achieve this collective endeavor. Our efforts create impact for all. Technologies that revolutionize industries. And jobs that bring prosperity to people. The discoveries from space benefit the way we live on Earth today. And those from the moon will create a better future for generations to come. But to do that, we must go. Hi, I'm Chell Ingram. My name is Raja Chari. Kayla Barron. Kate Rubens. Hi, I'm Christina Cook. NASA astronaut Joe Acaba. Jessica Meir. Woody Hoberg. Anne McLean. Stephanie Wilson. My name is Johnny Kim. Nicole Mann. Victor Glover. Jessica Watkins. Hi, I'm Matthew Dominic. Jasmine Mogbelli. Frank Rubio. Scott Tingle. This is what we do. This is what we will do. Let's go. We go to the moon to learn how to live on other planets. For the benefit of all.